So what I'm going to do is go into the poly cylinder one um, creation options here, and let's add a subdivision down the middle. So in this case, it's going to be height because you remember initially this cube, I mean sorry, this cylinder was created when it was rotated 90 degrees. So the height is going to refer to this direction. So let's go ahead and add the two, and that's just going to throw a division down here in the middle. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and select half of this. You can look at it in wireframe to make sure you've got it right. And just hit delete. So now we have half of a perch here. So let's go ahead and select these faces and do our extrusion. Alt E. R for scale. Bring it down like that. And let's go add a edge loop here, insert edge loop tool, and let's preview it and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is good. This is what we're looking for. And now we just need to duplicate it over. So uh, first thing I want to do is I want to freeze transformations. And what that means is we're basically saying, okay, I've worked on this object and I want to reset all of these things to zero. But I don't want to just dial them in to zero because that will move them around. I want it to stay where it actually is. So we have to go to Modify and Freeze Transformations right here. And if you look to the right under P Cylinder 2 in the channel box, you'll see all of these were set back to zero. Okay, so I've got a little bit of history on this too, so I'm just going to delete history. So we're working nicely, uh, nice and clean. And the pivot point is in the middle of this, or in the middle of what this used to be. So this is already set up for us. We'll get into situations later where we have to move the pivot. Anyway, I'm just going to hit Control D, which is a default hotkey. So that's duplicated that, and you can see that the uh, the edge here is turned dotted because there's now two of these objects sitting right on top of each other. There it is. And I'm going to scale it around. So I'm going to go to Scale, which is the R button, grab the Scale X, and I'm going to scale it over. And then I'm going to just look at this and dial it in, so negative 1. And now I've got a complete copy here. Um, but whenever you do that to an object, whenever you scale it over so that it's gone into the negative, we have to be aware of the normals of this object. So if you go to uh, show, or sorry, uh, lighting, turn off two-sided lighting, and if we freeze the transformations, we'll see that this object turns black, which means that we're looking at the inside of an object. So we just need to select that, go to normals, and reverse. And now those normals are facing in the right direction. So I'm going to undo that really quickly, and let's just grab both of these objects go to display polygons face normals there it is so this really illustrates what I'm talking about remember how we said that these normals show you what direction the face is actually facing and those the normals will always pop out of the, the correct direction in this case we have normals on this one too but we can't see them unless we look at it in wireframe mode so they actually are pointing inwards just to illustrate my point so I'm going to turn off that display just by going back to face normals. And I'll do the reverse of that. So normals, reverse. And now this is good. But there's one thing we have to do still, and that is merge these two together. And uh, there's two ways we can do this. There's the uh, normal way, which I'll show you first. If you go to mesh, we're going to combine these two together. And all that's saying is it's saying, okay, these are two separate objects, make them one object. And if you look down here in the outliner, you can see you've got polycylinder 2, polycylinder 3. If you select both of them, go to mesh, and combine. It now has turned it into this new thing called polysurface 1. So now it's just one object. But we still need to close the object. So we still have two border edges that are touching each other. So if we go into wireframe and then move into ver vertex mode, 
I'll select these one by one and we will merge them. You just look at the options real quick. Okay. So you can go around here and hit apply. Alternatively, you can select all of them. And using the threshold, this refers to the amount of distance between uh, each vertice. So it's going to merge everything that's underneath this distance from each other. So let's just see how that looks. Yeah. So these, the vertices that were sitting on top of each other are actually closer than this amount. If we were to undo this real quick, and if I change this to 1, this might be more problematic. Yeah, so all of those vertices were closer than one unit. So we just need to make sure that this is toggled right. And now this is a this is a good <laughs> polygon object, meaning that it's one and there are no open uh, edges anywhere. So that's the normal way to do it. Uh, there's a faster way though, which is done with this tool that I created here called Polysurgeon. So um, all you have to do in this case, this is how it looked before. Uh, it's kind of a smart little tool. If you select two things, two polygon objects, and hit this tool, it's going to say, oh, you want me to combine these together and I'll merge any vertices that are touching each other. So that's a really fast way to go about it. Um, alternatively, if you select any face on an object and run this tool, it's going to break that face out from the model. So it's kind of smart. It knows what to do based on what you have selected. And we can reverse this just by running this again. So that's a much faster way. But just so you know that what that tool is doing in the background is it's combining and then merging the vertices and so forth. Um, you can also select a edge loop. So if you double click this edge, it's going to grow that selection out all the way around. And if you run this tool, it'll break it apart based on that selection. So there's a lot of different ways you can use this. Anyway, there's a good looking perch.